People have been trying to predict the stock market for years, making algorithms, studying years of stock data, going through each and every statistic that could possibly predict the direction of where the market is going to go next. But what if I told you there was an easy way to see when the market is losing momentum and know when there's a high probability it's about to reverse in the opposite direction? A strategy so simple even your dog could do it. Well, I found one and it works pretty damn good. To first understand this strategy, we first have to dig deep and understand the trend of the chart. See what I did there? I said dig deep and it's Minecraft. God, I spent way too much time on this. You should be constantly asking yourself, what is the trend most likely to do next? To do that, I give myself three options. Is the trend most likely to continue heading in the direction it's going? Is it more likely to end and start consolidating? Or does it look like it's about to reverse? Now, you may be saying to yourself, how the f should I know? So as an example, we'll be using this chart. Now, when looking at this chart, I'm sure most of you are thinking, yeah, that's just a normal downtrend. Now, while it is a downtrend and it's making lower lows, you have to look at it more closely. Mostly. What I see are three drops within the downtrend. If we measure each one of these drops, we can clearly see the drops are slowly getting smaller in size, meaning that the downtrend is losing its momentum. So we now clearly see that the downtrend is slowing down. But how do we find the point of where this downtrend is most likely to reverse and change to an uptrend? The answer? Divergence. Divergence is basically when the price of a market is heading one direction, but an indicator is heading the opposite direction. Divergence can warn when the trend is weakening and in some cases may lead to price changing direction. In order to see if divergence is happening, we first have to add an indicator to our chart. Now there are many different indicators that can measure divergence. As long as it's a momentum indicator, you're good. For this example, we'll be using, drumroll please, RSI. Yeah we'll be using RSI. Click the indicators tab, type in RSI, and click this relative strength index one right here. Now that we have RSI on our chart, let's see if there is divergence occurring. So as you can see, at this most recent weakest drop, the chart made a lower low. But if we take a look at the RSI, it just made a higher high. What do you call this? Divergence. It can be a really great sign that the chart is about to reverse and change direction. In this case, head upwards. Now, as a quick side note, just because there's divergence doesn't guarantee the price will reverse. There are no guarantees in trading, none. But you can use divergence as a pretty nice sign the market is thinking about changing direction. So we have one, two, three lower lows that are shrinking in size, this is very important, and then at the last weakest low we have divergence occurring. All great signs that the market is thinking about reversing. But how do we confirm it's actually going to start heading upwards? We need what's called a trend filter. One nice easy way I like to filter trends with this strategy is just an ordinary moving average. So go to the indicators tab, type in EMA for exponential moving average. Go to the settings and change the length to 50, I'm also going to make mine blue. So it's pretty simple. If price is below the 50 EMA, it's a downtrend. If it's above, it's an uptrend. One key rule I like to go by is I will never take a long in a downtrend, and I will never take a short in an uptrend. So we have one confirmation signal right here. But we should add some more just to really confirm the trend reversal. What I like to do for that is what's called pivot points. Let's pivot. Let's pivot. Go to the indicator section, type in pivot point, make sure you click the standard one right here. Once you add it on your chart, you'll get this. I know, I know, it's pretty ugly. Let's clean it up a bit. Go to the settings of the indicator. You're gonna wanna change the pivot time frame to daily, then uncheck all these boxes besides P. Then you'll be left with one pivot point line per day. It's kind of the same as the exponential moving average. If price is below the pivot point, don't even think about going long. If it's above, don't think about going short. Then finally, for the icing on the cake, we have this level right here, where price used it as a support and is now using it as a resistance. So we now have three key factors in this area, the 50 exponential moving average, the pivot point, and this resistance level. And what's even better is all three of these points are pretty close together. The closer they are together, the better. So we can confirm the reversals happening if price passes all three of these points. Once that happens, we can enter a trade confidently and take advantage of the reversal. Now watch what happens. Price ends up breaking the 50 EMA and the resistance level we drew earlier, but it hasn't quite broke the pivot point yet. So we wait and be patient. A few more candles go by and it actually uses the 
pivot point as a resistance. The next day comes, and since we're using daily pivots, a new pivot was made, and it was made below the price. So price has now passed all three of our checkpoints, which gives us the confirmation that price is starting the trend upwards. So we enter a trade. I set my stop loss here. If you want to learn more about placing stop losses and how to choose where to put them, I'll leave a link in the description to a video I made about how to place better stop losses. Watch that after this if you need some more help choosing where to place your stop loss. So by this point, we are in the trade. We have our stop loss placed and we watch to see what the market does next. Just as planned, price ends up trending upwards. Then it retests the 50 EMA and the next pivot point. Now this is a very key area. If price would break downwards through these levels, we would exit our position as that means the trend is now in a downtrend. But as long as the pivot point and EMA are holding and as long as the price is above these points, we hold. Hold it. Hold it. Yeah, hold it. But let's see what it does. It then ends up bouncing off these points and makes a huge upwards movement, which is great for us because that means more profit. So at this point, you can take some profit off the table and sell 25 or 50% of your shares or keep holding your position. It really depends on your risk tolerance and what type of trader you are. But then look what happens. It starts getting a little weaker. How can we tell? Well, it's making lower highs, which is never a good sign. On top of that, the price is now below the 50 EMA and it's tested the pivot point twice now, which is usually Usually not a good signal. Then price starts consolidating and moving sideways. So at this point you could start thinking about exiting the trade, since it's giving a lot of signs of weakness and it's starting to move sideways. But if you're one of those biker dude risky traders, there's still a slight glimmer of hope though, as price is still above the pivot point. We then watch what the chart does next, and the next day comes around and a new pivot point is made, and it was made above the price. We are suddenly below the pivot. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure stay everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay so now that the pivot is above the price, the situation has changed completely. All of these are signs that the market is about to head downwards. Then just as an extra tip the market is slowing down, the price tests the pivot point and gets rejected. So by now, we are definitely out of the trade. And look what happens, the market falls. But as you can see, we got a really nice profit. And what's even better is that we really mitigated our risk with all the confirmed signals and, in general, entered a very confirmed trade. You can get a lot more advanced with this trading strategy by adding volume, chart patterns, level 2 data, other indicators, and so many other trading tactics. I actually posted this trading strategy in my discord first before making a video on it. So if you want to see other trading strategies, my backtest results, or even just talk to other like-minded traders, you should join and come say what's up. I'll leave a link in my description. Hopefully this video helped you out, and like I said, if you want some help placing better stop losses, watch this video, it'll really help you out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.